Thanks to Squarespace for making today's video possible. What's up guys, it's Ed from TechSource and what I'm holding here right now is the world's thinnest, most quietest, powerful gaming laptop and it's almost perfect. I've been using it for about two weeks now and I'll be sharing what I liked about it as well as things I didn't like about it. This is the Asus Zephyrus and it starts at $2699. It comes equipped with an i7 7700HQ, 16 gigs of RAM and a GTX 1080 with Max-Q technology. So in order to achieve this extremely sleek form factor, they had to come up with a different approach. Instead of just throwing in the best GPU in there, they went after obtaining the best performance with maximum efficiency. This means that the clock speeds are slightly less than other GTX 1080 laptops. The trade-off is that the GPU uses less power, which means it requires less cooling, and that also means that the laptop is a lot quieter because the fans are smaller and don't need to work as hard. And speaking of cooling, the bottom portion of the Asus Zephyrus opens up as you lift the screen for better airflow. Now because the clock speeds are lower on the Max-Q design GTX 1080, the performance is also affected. It's about 18% lower compared to other 1080 laptops. I personally think the trade-off is worth it because in return you get a quiet and powerful gaming laptop in a slim and lightweight form factor. One of the things I love about this laptop is the design. It's a premium device from Asus and it's built really well. I don't think they cut any corners here. Then again, for around $2,700, there better not be. The top has a brushed aluminum surface, which does attract fingerprints and oil, and there's an ROG logo that lights up when the laptop is on. Lifting the lid up, which you can easily do with one hand, we are greeted by an interesting layout for the keyboard. Everything has been pushed down and closer to the edge so that they can use all that extra space up there for hardware and cooling. Personally, I prefer this layout a lot more than the traditional keyboard setup. It's a lot easier to type on and your palms won't accidentally touch the trackpad since it's all the way on the right side. Asus was even kind enough to throw in a wrist rest for those that want an extra level of comfort, but personally I had no problems at all typing without it. What's really cool about this trackpad is that it doubles as a number pad. All you have to do is click on this button near the top and an LED grid with numbers will pop up, which is genius. Although the numpad is very accurate, I personally don't like using it because it doesn't offer any type of feedback. So you won't know if you tapped it unless you look at the screen as you tap on the numpad. If Asus added something similar to the TapDink engine on their iPhone 7, or basically if I were to tap on the numpad, you would get a small vibration. If they added something like that to their trackpad, it would be really awesome, but I realize that's asking a bit too much. Having a 2-in-1 trackpad and numpad was probably the only design option they had to go with in order to fit everything near the bottom, but the trackpad and numpad are both very accurate. The keys on the other hand are very nice to type on. You get excellent feedback and responsiveness with 1.4mm key travel. They are obviously backlit with three different brightness levels that you can choose from, and they are RGB. But you can only change the colors from three sections of the keyboard. The QWER, WASD, and the rest of the keys. Unfortunately, you can't customize each key separately. But here's what I found annoying. So the color of the grid of the numpad plus the keys on the top of the trackpad are always gonna be red. So basically, if you do want to change the colors of the LEDs on the keyboard to anything other than red, it's not gonna look good together. Honestly, it kind of defeats the purpose of having RGB keys in the first place if you can't change the colors on all the keys on the keyboard. The display has a 15.6 inch 1080p anti-glare TN panel with a 120Hz refresh rate, which also comes equipped with G-Sync. The front-facing camera up top is a standard 720p camera with a decent low-light performance. No major complaints here. When it comes to ports, I was a little disappointed to find out that there isn't an SD card slot, but you do get an HDMI, four USB 3.0 ports, and a USB Type-C. The speakers are located at the edges of the laptop, and they are upward-firing speakers. The quality isn't bad, but on max volume, you can hear slight distortion from the sound vibrations. Zed from TechSource, and welcome to Setup Wars episode 110, Potato Edition, with the crappiest of the crappiest setups. The laptop does get pretty hot during full load, but only in the area above the keyboard. I haven't noticed any heat coming into contact with my hands while the laptop is on full load. You can definitely hear the fan noise during full load, but the noise easily gets drowned out if you're playing on speakers or have headphones on. The GTX 1080 does work on every game I threw at it. Max settings and 1080p, I got over 100 FPS in most titles. Other games that were more intensive still pushed over 60, so I'm not complaining here.
Gaming on this laptop was so much fun. The gameplay was very smooth thanks to the 120Hz G-Sync monitor and the GTX 1080 with Max-Q technology delivers in performance. The Zephyrus even handled editing like a champ. I was able to edit a 1080p video without any problem. The video playback never stuttered or even lagged once. Overall, the experience was very smooth. And also, these are the render times using Vegas Pro 14. I did one for 1080p and one for 4K, and both of these were 60 second RAW files. Battery life, however, isn't the best. It's got a 50 watt hour battery and it lasted 2 hours and 8 minutes before it died, watching YouTube videos non stop from full charge. Also, the PC Mark Work battery benchmark came in at 2 hours and 6 minutes, which is very close to what I tested. And by the way, both these tests were done on balanced mode with 75% brightness. So the things I liked about the laptop, I want to start off with the obvious. It's form factor. It's super light and thin, making it perfect for travel. I just love the premium design and the feel of the keyboard while typing. It's very comfortable and the trackpad is extremely accurate. It's also nice that Asus threw in a wrist rest. It's got a pretty fast boot time of 9 seconds, which I can appreciate. The 120Hz G-Sync display is very nice and the performance is incredible for both gaming and productivity. It's crazy to think that I'm able to play the same games from my high-end desktop PC on this thin laptop. So the things I didn't like. The numpad integration, although very cool and creative, it's not something I'm a fan of simply because it's missing feedback. It doesn't have an SD card slot, and being a content creator, I find it inconvenient not having that easy access. The speakers are decent, and at max volumes you can hear a slight distortion, but a lot of people don't care about speakers on laptops since they use headphones anyways. The battery life isn't the best, but I understand that you can only do so much given the sheer size and the amount of space to work with. Expandability is very difficult. The laptop does come with a screwdriver, which is weird because that's only to access the back cover, where you can't really do anything. To access the storage, you will need a Torx wrench, and even then, that's the only piece of hardware you can replace or upgrade. And finally, the RGB feature on the laptop is contradictive. You can't change the lights on all the keys. The four keys on top of the trackpad will always remain red, so that will always throw off the color scheme for the rest of the keys. Unless you're going with all red LEDs. Now I do realize that most of these things are just me nitpicking things, and that's because the ASUS Zephyrus is a solid laptop, and there aren't that many things that I find wrong with it. So in conclusion, the ASUS Zephyrus is the best gaming laptop that you can buy right now if you're looking for the best performance in a light, thin, and quiet laptop. Now obviously it's a bit expensive, but honestly I can safely say that you are getting what you pay for. So that does it for my review of the ASUS Zephyrus gaming laptop, I'll drop a link to it down below, check it out if you guys are interested. If you enjoy these types of uh, laptop videos on the channel, make sure to leave a like to reassure me that I did a good job, but if you guys didn't like the video, feel free to dislike as well. That's cool too. Uh, now let's talk about the giveaway. So I talked about my what's in a box video, that if that video gets 50,000 likes, I'll do a giveaway on this laptop. But I'll give you guys another chance as well since that didn't hit 50k. If this video gets 50,000 likes, I'll do a giveaway on this gaming laptop as well. And one lucky subscriber will win this bad boy. So all you guys have to do is drop a like on the video and comment down below if you guys do want to participate on the giveaway, just in case it does hit 50,000 likes. I'll announce the winners at the end of July, so this video has like two weeks to get 50,000 likes, which is a lot of time. Anyways, I'm done rambling. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Again, a huge thanks to Squarespace for making this video possible. It's an all-in-one platform that lets you create a beautiful website without having any experience in coding. Even an idiot like me can do it. In fact, my website dealsource.tech, where you can find daily tech deals, was created on Squarespace over a year ago, and I still have it even till today. They have a lot of templates to choose from, or you can start from scratch like I did. It's really easy to set up a new domain name and get started, so check out squarespace.com slash techsource and get 10% off your first purchase. I'll drop a link down below if anyone is interested.